we actually gain a lot from having people with Down syndrome around and seeing what the effects are of trisomy 21. At the same time that um, I'm working to see if we can ameliorate some of those effects, we're learning about the processes that cause these issues. And there, there's nothing that occurs in Down syndrome that doesn't occur in the rest of the population. Uh, it's just that the frequency is much higher. So uh, prevention of cancer, um, uh, ways to enhance cognitive ability, looking at structural problems in the brain, uh, affecting the way the face develops, which can be a problem in a lot of people, uh, congenital heart disease, all of these things that are studies of individuals with Down syndrome uh, help us to contribute to an understanding of everyone's health and well-being. And if it weren't for people with Down syndrome, many of these would go unnoticed. For example, the um, gene that we found that is, um, reduces, dramatically reduces the number of intestinal tumors is a gene that was thought to cause cancer. So no one would ever have gone around overexpressing this gene to prevent cancer. But in fact, its normal role is not to cause cancer, which makes sense. Why would we evolve a gene that would kill us in a horrible fashion? Uh, rather, its normal function is to prevent one of these processes. So this is just one example of what we've really gained from the genetic legacy of people with Down syndrome. So um, there is an awful lot to be learned from them scientifically. And once you get the opportunity to interact with a lot of these people, there's a lot to be learned from them personally as well.